in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Good morning, and welcome to our worship on this, the second Sunday of Trinity. You're very welcome to Mitcham Parish Church as we live stream our Eucharist, our parish Eucharist, on Facebook. Today we actually listen to our readings, and particularly the Gospel. Jesus speaks to us very, very strongly about what our commitment is to our Christian life. What is our vocation? What is our calling? And how do we handle that? Particularly in a life and a world where there are so many competing issues. So we need to ask God to open our hearts and minds really sincerely this day so that we can actually take great care in addressing these issues and listening very closely to what Jesus has to say to us, what God has to say to us. So let's start our worship by saying together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and in sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Keep me in your presence, O Lord, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon me. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the
Now we come to the collect for this week, which you will find on your notice sheet, which was sent out yesterday. We pray together. Let us pray. Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now attend to the reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Alleluia. the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and sent them out with the following instruction. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. 
It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become unknown. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the rooftops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted, so do not be afraid. You are of more value than many, many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the world. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me, is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today's gospel brings a big challenge, no, a series of big challenges to us all, as Jesus presents us with a relentless barrage of sayings about what it means to really follow him, what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. We've just heard the pep talk that Jesus gives to his apostles before he sends them out to take the good news, as you will remember from last week, to their own, to the lost tribes of Israel. Today, you know, for simplicity's sake, it might be best to single out, as it were, three of the radical instructions of Jesus that we've just heard. There's so much in the Gospel reading today. Read it again during the week. For it's a rich diet of content that we are confronted with. And today I'm proposing we boil it down a little bit. First we're given what would ordinarily be viewed as the absolute opposite about how we feel we should treat our family and family life. For Jesus tells us that if we love father, mother, son, daughter more than him, we are not worthy of him. This must make us think at least about how and when this could be an issue in our lives. There are probably times in all our lives when we depart from what we're told to do. But nonetheless, it's difficult at times to contradict our parents or our children, especially when we are thought to be doing or saying things that are contrary to their approach. And secondly, Jesus tells us that if we do not take up our cross, and follow him. That, simply put, we are not worthy of him. Now it's pretty rare that ordinary, healthy people are motivated to displace pleasure with pain, 
or will choose contentment over suffering. But Jesus uses this to tell us, to warn or to caution us that following him will entail suffering and hardship, difficulty and potentially pain. It won't be a smooth motorway, but a rocky, rocky road. And finally, and possibly most shocking for all of us in this age, Jesus tells us that the way to discover who we really are is to take that risk and lose ourselves entirely for his sake. In other words, we're not to find real and true fulfillment when we are not seeking ourself or self-fulfillment, but we shall in giving ourselves to others in service, in giving ourselves away to Christ and to God. Gosh, these three demands are giving us something to think about today, that's for sure. Maybe we just need to reread the Gospel section and read it again and again and again, and perhaps just take one element at a time and pray about it. It might make them more handleable, more palatable, if we think them through with God in prayer. Because we could easily get indigestion and take something to neutralize this whole passage, this whole passage of Jesus' daring words. And the most important thing is we should never walk away from the challenging words of Jesus. We must always keep them there. We must chew them over. We must really try to get to the depth of what he's trying to say to us. These challenges do rather put me in mind of the gospel observation that you cannot serve two masters at the same time. And what Jesus is doing here is saying to us, when the chips are down, where will you stand? Who will you prefer to follow? And where will it lead you to eventually? The Christian calling requires a willingness to speak up when basic human values are threatened. And this can lead us into opposing what our nearest and dearest might wish. We risk being spoken of negatively when we say that God's creation, for instance, is such a gift that we should respect and treat all people the same, without qualification, that black lives matter as much as white lives matter, that there honestly should be no concept of privilege or discrimination in an ideal world, in a Christian world because we all stand together in this world, side by side, shoulder to shoulder, one in Christ. Now sadly, we won't be hearing the next set of words from Jesus in this speech to his disciples next Sunday, as we shall be celebrating the festival of our patrons, St. Peter and St. Paul, and we next week go off piste with the scripture readings. But the end of chapter 10 sees Jesus saying in verse 40, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. And then in verse 42, it reads, And whoever gives even a cup of water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. There is a bit more positiveness as this instruction from Jesus goes on. And sadly, because the scripture reading ended where it did today, we just end up, wow, really impacted by those challenging words. We're taken back to the fact that Jesus is challenging his apostles as they are sent out to commit themselves to God and to furthering the kingdom. And he warns them that they may well come up against opposition, particularly in their own backyards. That they may find that to stand their own ground causes them pain and puts them in opposition to the status quo. 
and life won't necessarily be easy. And she also tells us that the cost of true discipleship is the giving away of themselves for the sake of others. This really is Jesus setting out his mission statement, setting his agenda, literally his divine plan, and speaking ultimately about the cross, which he will face as the ultimate test of his faithfulness to God's plan, of his commitment to God's intention for the world. And if we look at all of those words of Jesus today in the light of the crucifixion, but also the resurrection and the ascension, it starts to make sense. But for now, as Jesus' mission and ministry stretches out before him, Jesus is honest. The road won't be easy, but it will lead ultimately to the joy of fulfillment, to the joy of a risen life, to the sense of triumph over all that is not of God. And Jesus is determined to achieve that. So the first verse of chapter 11 begins, Now when Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and proclaim his message in their city. There's no holding a good one down. There is nothing that will discourage Jesus in his mission. And as he goes to visit the disciples' cities and towns, his friends and relatives, so he is setting the example to us all of a life given in service to God and to his people. I just pray that we, you and I, will be brave enough to follow in Jesus' footsteps. May he be with us every step of the way. Um. And so now we move on to saying the creed together, that important statement of our faith which gives us the confidence that we all stand together as Christians as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has risen through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now in the power of the Spirit and in union with our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Father. As we bring our prayers to our Lord this morning, we pray that we may hold to Christ through thick and thin. We 
through pain and suffering, through conflict, through doubt. And we pray that we may draw as his church closer and closer to God's mission plan for this world. We pray especially for Christopher, Bishop of Southwark, and Richard, Bishop of Kingston, we pray for Simon, our Archdeacon, and Rachel, our area dean. And we pray for the parishes, both in the Merton Deanery, and more especially locally here in the Mitcham Group Ministry. Lord, may we follow you more closely day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your world, that gift of creation which you have given to us. And we pray especially for all nations. We pray that we may serve your purpose in this world by ensuring that all nations receive equitable resources and respect. We pray especially this day for those who go without essential resources such as clean water, adequate food, a shelter over their heads, a sense of belonging. And we pray for the leaders of the nations that they may be guided in the ways of justice and truth and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our local community here in Mitcham. We pray for our local council, our local councillors. We pray for all who strive to make this a better place to live. We thank you for the beauty of this area, for the beautiful parks and green spaces that we enjoy the historic buildings and for that sense of history and heritage that we have. And we thank you for the people of this area. May we be servants to one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are sick or suffering in any way at this time. And we pray especially for those who continue to be in hospital suffering from coronavirus. And we pray for those who are in hospital for any other reason. We give thanks for the caring attention of doctors and nurses, carers and helpers, for all those who actually contribute to the well-being of others. In our own community list today, we pray for Fred Gearing, Dylan Long, Steve Watt, Anita Coilo, Robert Willer, Peter Coley, Margaret Hudson, Kwame, Sandra Wood, Anne Gillis, and Barbara Atkins. We pray for those mentioned in our intercessions book and also those who we carry in our own hearts this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we give you thanks, O Lord, for the promise of eternal life through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, so we pray for those who have died. We remember those who have died recently, among them Valdina Peters and Julie Connell, priest. We pray for those whose year's mind falls about this time and we give thanks for those that we have known and loved but lost. Giving thanks for their lives, their love and their example. Rest eternal grant them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Father, as we offer you ourselves this day. Be alongside us, Lord Jesus, as a brother. Guide us with your light, Father, and inspire us with your Holy Spirit that we may truly claim to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now will you stand for the peace, particularly if there's more than one of you in your household. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. And also with all of you at home, we send our greetings and our love. And please, in these moments, as we prepare the altar, we pray for those who you know in church who perhaps you haven't seen for some while, remember them and give thanks to God for their friendship and their love. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh, 
as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. you are holy indeed the source of all holiness grant that by the power of your holy spirit and according to your holy will these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of our lord jesus christ he in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same way after supper he took the cup and again he gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking to his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you send the holy spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of Mary, the mother of God, Peter, Paul, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today. Daily bread, forgive us our 
our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, Give us your peace. Behold, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us by your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven, where we will share the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ, your Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen indeed. One or two notices just to remind everybody, please, that if you can and you're around and you remember, please do remember, tomorrow is Windrush Day and our bishop has asked that we all observe two minutes silence at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. It's an important thing for us to do as an expression of solidarity to unite ourselves with our black community as we remember those Windrush days and the fallout which is still with us. So 11 o'clock tomorrow, Monday, please join me and Andrew 
in two-minute silence in commemoration of Windrush Day. I hope that we will see you again on Tuesday morning when the Eucharist will be celebrated at 9.30. And meanwhile, we wish you every blessing and joy on this lovely sunny day. The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.